I'm CK. I recently did a build of a little power supply for a breadboard. Tonight I'm going to do another power supply. This one is a standalone benchtop power supply. Uh, it's really cute. I like it. I've built three of them so far for my own use. I think they're a great beginner or young uh, person's kit and that's why I want to document it and show everybody how it goes together pretty simply and it's very, very useful. So I hope you enjoy it. So let's see what we get in the kit. Now, uh, I bought this from Amazon. Uh, it was $19.95. It's a huge amount of value for me, uh, in my opinion, for 20 bucks. This is a very good kit. Uh, I strongly recommend it for beginner builders, young builders. Uh, this is a kit for, in my opinion, 11 years old up. There's only two real areas that you may need to lend a hand uh, to your young builder, but other than that, your Explorer engine, Electronics Explorer will have a lot of fun with it. We get a power cord, a transformer. This is the back, sides, and top. Uh, they look brown, but they're not. They're lucite. They're covered in brown paper to keep them from being scratched. Uh, we'll deal with that later. An instructions sheet. Pretty minimal. It's a very simple kit. Some wire. Hardware to put everything together. We'll set that aside for the moment. And then all the bits. Two areas that are more challenging than not are installing the digital display and wiring the transformer in and we'll take some special care when we get to that. So again the kit uh, instructions don't give you much step by step. Uh, it's not that type of kit so you just use your builder sense and you say well I'm gonna do the components that lay flat first. So I'm going to put the four diodes on the board first. They're all the same. Uh, they go right here. And of course one of the first things you do when you get a new kit from a new manufacturer is you say, oh, how do they decide to lay out their board? How much extra wire do they need? Are they snug? Are they loose? First thing you got to figure out is how they lay the board out and how you're going to lay your wires in. So that's the diodes. Uh, next, we're going to put, it, put in all the resistors. I forgot, we've got a couple of Zener diodes to drop in here too. Now one thing you might notice on this board as I'm doing this, as I'm soldering, the solder pads are all very, very far apart. Uh, that's why one of the uh, reasons why I highly recommend this for younger or beginner builders. Uh, the opportunity to short two uh, solder pads together is very limited. Now we'll start doing resistors. So the first one is 240k ohms, so red, 
Now, as always, uh, when you build something, you pick an orientation for the values of your components. I personally go left and up. In other words, the number one value on a resistor, the first value stripe, is on the left side, or if it's oriented this way, it's up. Capacitors, uh, the disk type, go with the value facing left. Again, it doesn't matter which way you do it. What does make a difference is being consistent about how you do it. If you ever can't, if you ever think I can't really read this resistor value, just get your multimeter and test it. As you can see there, this is reading at uh, 9.97 uh, kilo ohms. So that's the 10K resistor. So you don't have to trust your eyesight necessarily. You don't have to trust your perception of the colors that they have. Uh, just put it on your meter to be sure. And that's that. The resistors and diodes are on the board. And at my place right now, it's about 10 o'clock, and that's time for the cats to get their evening treats. So they're standing outside the door waiting for me. So I'm gonna end for tonight and we'll come back tomorrow and move on to put some capacitors on the board. I think what I'd like to do next are the four diodes on the bottom, the LEDs, since we're in a diode mood. Of course, all the while making sure we have our polarity right, long leg positive, green. I'm gonna go ahead and solder all these at one time. See, if you notice this stupid spring that keeps the circuit board pinned, it fights back if you rotate in one direction. If you rotate in the other direction, it doesn't, but it's just annoying. I'm still in search of a better circuit board holder. I've got this one. I've got one from Panavice. I've tried two or three others over the years. None of them are any good. I may have to design one myself. I'm skipping a leg there because the angle is not right. I have to clip a little bit to get in there to be comfortable, so there's no rush. Just want to line them up a little bit so they look nice and orderly. Yes, they're all in a row. Yay. Uh, we've got a couple of disc caps. Oh, and if you're seeing this, some little floaty coil, foil, that's left over from the ribbon mic I built uh, a little while ago. There's two YouTube videos of me putting that together, and that was certainly an interesting job. Something far, far, far from what you'd want a beginner to do, but I'd never made a ribbon microphone, and it was kind of fun. Even though challenging. Working with microphone ribbon foil, very, very precise, tedious. See, this is fighting back. Ugh, and I can't. The way I 
have the leads hanging out. It was hitting on the bottom. Okay, now we can deal with it again. But the reason why I mentioned the ribbon mic is that the ribbon material is only a couple of microns thick, so I've got it kind of floating all over right now because I spoiled two ribbons uh, before I got a good one. So they're excess and they're floating around the workshop. It's kind of cute. Okay, the next thing will be, let's see, uh, may as well put the little beeper in. Now, uh, this is an overvoltage beeper or something. I, I actually have never been able to trigger it on my other uh, units, so I don't know what it actually is. But uh, I think I'm not going to do that yet. I think I'm going to put the uh, transistor in first. And then even before I put the beeper in, I'm going to put the IC socket in. Uh, actually, nope. I'm going to put the trimmer pot in first. Okay, now as we noted earlier, I see oops, the IC socket has a couple of legs bent, many legs bent. So what I do is I take a long set of needle nose pliers. pliers. These are uh, Exolite, uh, a Weller company, and I really, I've always liked these. I just grab them all at once, straighten them all up. And do the other side, because if you do them all in a flat, set a needle nose, you're getting all the legs at once in a nice consistent plane and that works very well. And does it fit? Or I'm going to have to splay them out a little bit. Yep, goes right in. Now again, here's one of my secrets. So instead of just flipping the board over and hoping IC stays in or using tape or whatever, I use locking tweezers. I go in and lock it in, and now I don't have to worry about the socket being uneven, pulling loose, or falling out while I'm trying to solder it. It's a very, these locking tweezers, I they eliminate so much frustration. And the IC socket is on the board. We're saving two things. We're saving the display and the uh, voltage regulator for a little later. Uh, I want to do the straightforward stuff straightforward so again here's the little buzzer I don't know what it's supposed to do I don't know when it buzzes but it is polarized so we make sure it goes in the right sockets and I think this is a little I think this is a little bent too now I'm gonna put the connectors on. Next thing I'm going to do is put the voltage regulator in. Voltage regulator goes right in there. But we've also got the heat sink and they don't supply any thermal paste uh, probably because you don't really need it for a power supply of this low amperage, but I'm going to put some on anyway just because. First I have to go into my the bag of hardware and find the screws, the screw that I'll be putting there. 
the heat sink is already tapped so you don't need a nut so what I'm gonna do put the oops put a small dab of thermal paste on the back not much at all. Gosh, that's too much. That came, too much came out. So I'm going to clean some of that off. I don't need quite that much. There we go. Just a little dab of thermal paste. Get the regulator lined up with the screw hole. Get it partially screwed in. Not all the way tight. It's all done. Tip's getting a little gunky. Now flip it around, tighten this screw up so that it's completely tight against the heat sink. Okay, next thing a little bit interesting. It'll be the digital display. Huh. Well, that's interesting. Now, uh, the ones of these I've built before had three thin leads coming off there. This one does not have the leads pre-installed, which is kind of annoying, because I wasn't planning on soldering them on myself, but... Uh, let me see what I'm going to do about that. And of course, my camera battery went dead sometime during the process. Uh, I don't know when. I'll, I'll look at the video later and see what you missed, but probably just missed me repairing the LED display. But that's okay. We'll just press on from there. Mounting the LED display. Only thing, two things left to do. One is to put the pot on. The other is to put the microcontroller in its socket. And as I said, on at the beginning when we went through the parts this has got a bunch of a, not a bunch it has two bent legs but that's easier to deal with let me okay let me push them against the side of the workbench to angle them in a little bit so we can get them in the socket Where's the notch? This is a little Texas Instrument part. I'll read off the... Wait, my legs are bent in too much on this side. Uh, I'll read off the number. It is a uh, Texas Instrument 
HYC 2032Z uh, or also it's a CD 4069BE Baker Echo. Okay, notch to the right position. Legs all looking good. And all seated with nothing bent. Yep, all good. Now we can put the potentiometer in there. So the circuit board itself is now done. Uh, the next thing we're going to be doing is mounting the transformer, the red leads go right here, uh, and this is probably the part of the kit, uh, two things, this display and this transformer are the two things in the kit that you probably want to help your youngsters with if they're uh, not hugely experienced yet, if they're just beginning, uh, these two areas are the areas that might cause the most frustration. So give them a hand with that. Now as part of this, we're going to be mounting the circuit board and the transformer on the base plate. Dig out the base plate. So we're going to be putting, assembling like that. Now, as you can see, the first thing we have to do is take the paper off the lucite, and that's so frustrating uh, and takes a while, so I'm going to do that off camera. Nobody needs to see me swearing at pieces of paper. Okay, we're back live. Now, the first thing we're going to be doing on this next step in the assembly process is we're going to be mounting circuit board and the transformer to the uh, Lexan bottom. But of course, as part of that, we've got to connect the power leads from the transformer to uh, the main board. And we don't want them to be this long, so I've got them set out on the holes that will be used to mount to the bottom. So about that is the amount of lead we want. So I'll just clip that off there. Okay, wires are in, they're secure, give them a good tug. Okay, so there it is mounted to the base. Next thing to do is connect the main power supply cord. One thing you'll probably notice here, uh, there is no fusing on this. Uh, if by some chance the transformer shorts or you get a sudden huge power draw. I don't know why that would happen, but if it did happen, uh, there's no fusing. It would just burn up. So you deal with that. Now for the power cord, we're going to have to trim the uh, leads from the to the power transformer because they're too long uh, without a little trimming. So you've got two side pieces 
you're going to have to pick which one. You're going to have to see which one is the one that the power supply goes into. And you can tell that because this end has the holes for the wires you're going to connect to the power supply outlet. This end does not. And you'll see on this end it's got a little notch and that goes into this, the strain relief on the power cord goes into that little notch. Okay. Ah, bless my heart. You saw what I did, didn't you? You all saw it and you didn't tell me. Yep, I didn't put the shrink on. Now at this point, except for putting the case together, uh, we're done. So I'm actually going to go ahead and plug this in so you can see it. Let me get my meter set up inside the camera field of view. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have the traditional smoke check. We'll see if this actually fires up and doesn't burn up, so you get to watch it. Oop, we got lights. We got lights, and I don't see any smoke. So that's all positive. Now as you can see, it's showing 1.24 volts, and I'm going to show you that this in my experience, this is a very accurate uh, display. So if I go to the output, and you can see the fluke is showing uh, 1.27 versus 1.24. Well, that's pretty pretty accurate to me. Now as I dial it up, say we go up to 2.68 and I'm showing 2.7. I mean I'm not going to complain about uh, two hundredths or one hundredths of a volt difference. 4.60, 4.609. I mean this is even the higher you go, the more precise it is. The number there is, you can rely on it for the voltage you're, you're outputting. Even all the way up to the top at 15 some. Uh, actually, come on, you can get it. Well, 13.9, 13.8, that's doing okay. I mean, there's the trimmer that we could... I built about four of these, and I use them quite a bit, primarily because... Well, let's just have an example. What am I going to do? I mean, I could grab out my standard DC power supply, take up 10 inches of bench space by four or five inches by the height and uh, get all the precision I need and the coarse and fine adjustments and so on and knowing I can put out a whole bunch of amperage. But a lot of times you just don't need this. It's, it's valuable when you, when you need it. Yes, absolutely. You need a good bench uh, power supply or two or three, but if all you're doing is lighting up uh, a 200 milliamp circuit, 
this is fine. These work really well. And as I say, I've got like uh, 10 of them around. Not 10 of them, four of them around. And I just put them all over the shop and wherever I need a little power, uh, they work. Now here's it in use, for example. This is a little digital clock that I have on my uh, workbench. And it's powered by one of these little power supplies and at 9 volts and it's been powering this for about a year without a hitch or a glitch it just sits there and continues to run and run and run and run these are really reliable really good and I highly recommend them and again as you saw from the assembly uh, they're very good for young folks and I'd encourage you to get a couple I hope you enjoyed watching this and see you next video.